Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles where in today's video Oedel here in the tier 8 British destroyer HMS Lightning in a tier 8 ranked battle on the Shards map is... well I can't really say too much without really giving the whole game away. Suffice to say that in... is it nearly six years now of playing World of Warships? I've never seen a match play out the way that this one does. Now, as you probably noticed, by all the jerks and stutters, Oedel is suffering from not the most stable and reliable of internet connections. He's having to deal with lag spikes like this one. Yeah, that one was pretty nasty. At regular points throughout the course of this battle. So just bear that in mind. In case you're wondering, yes, this is the North American server. So, yeah, that probably means his internet's being throttled by Verizon or Comcast or... Whoever runs the ISP Monopoly, wherever it is that he happens to live. I think right about now would probably be a good time to remind everybody that World of Warships is supposed to be a free-to-play game. And HMS Lightning here is a free-to-play ship. It's not a premium, you don't have to spend a penny in order to get to it, and it's a rather good ship. I mean, call me biased. I, I was in the Royal Navy, but I do like the British destroyers in general, and of course HMS Daring at Tier 10 is absolutely fantastic, but down here at Tier 8 the Lightning is pretty damn good. Check out the Stealth for example, 5.5 kilometres. That's phenomenal. Now she definitely doesn't have the longest range torpedoes in the game by any stretch of the imagination, but with a range of 8 kilometres it works, because you've got that 5.5 kilometre Stealth with a concealment mod and the concealment expert skill on your captain, so you can stealth torpedo in this thing. Plus, Royal Navy ships also enjoy the ability to ripple fire the torpedoes, or in other words, fire them one at a time. Although, be aware that the torpedo launcher will not start reloading until all torpedoes have been expended from the launcher. This isn't like an Italian auto-reloading tank in World of Tanks. You have to get rid of all of the torpedoes before the reload starts. Oh, that is a very, very unfortunate position to be caught in for the enemy Akazuki. The friendly Edinburgh, I don't know if you saw it in chat at the beginning of the battle, but they're communicating with each other, which is a rarity, almost as rare as an Edinburgh with radar. Although not so rare on the North American server, I do notice people actually communicate effectively amongst their teammates more on the North American server than I see it on the EU server. Although that's almost certainly because of the lack of an effective language barrier on the North American server where pretty much everybody speaks English. And while many people speak English on the EU server, you can't get around the fact that there are, oh, I don't know, how many different native languages in Europe? 20? 30? More? Couldn't say. Oh, that was a bit of an error. Yeah, the British smokescreen. You get a lot of charges on the British destroyer smoke, but it does not last long. Barely more than 30 seconds, and he managed to... Actually, he's gotten away with that. More or less. <laughs> you must keep an eye on the smoke screen timer in a British destroyer, because the smoke barely lasts 30 seconds. You do get to compensate for that by having more charges than other ships' smoke screen generators, but it's really not a, I'm going to sit here and farm a target for the next minute and a half smoke. It's a sort of get out of jail free card. And Oedel I'm pretty sure, didn't realise that the smoke was about to expire, and he got caught in open water. And he, well, he got away with it, he didn't take a huge amount of damage. Oh, there's those lag spikes again, not good. Things are going pretty well though, as long as his internet connection stabilises. They've managed to nail the enemy Akazuki, so somebody got first blood. As a whole, the team decided at the beginning of the match that they were going to go for Bravo, the central cap in the middle of the map, and then from then figure out whether to attack, defend, or whatever. The enemy team do have control of Charlie up to the north. Oedel's team have just grabbed Bravo, and at the moment nobody is contesting Alpha down to the south. Oedel popped his view out there between shots, and there's a very, very suspicious looking smoke screen just parked around the corner of Capture Circle Charlie. So, at least one of the two surviving enemy destroyers is up there. Actually, let's take a look at the minimap. Yep, the other surviving enemy destroyer is all the way down to the south. And that was the Ognavoy, which means the other Akazuki is nearby. The team have just lost their low Yang, but, well, it's only one kill each, and both teams have one cap, so this could still very easily go either way. Quick word about the Lightning's guns, by the way. Six guns in three turrets, two guns per. And the Lightning is the first British destroyer 
that has turrets that can rotate a full 360 degrees. So if you're engaging a target on the starboard side, and then you have to quickly switch fire and engage a target on the port side, you don't have to wait for the turrets to rotate the full 360 degrees. Instead, they can just quickly skip from one side to the next. Meanwhile, Odell's looking for that Akazuki. Torpedoes. Yet yeah, the Akazuki is still inside that smoke screen. Or he was when he launched the torpedoes. If he's got any sense, yep, he's bugging out. There's not going to be a kill here, but he's going to be able to do some damage. Unfortunately, the smoke screen isn't really going to be that much help to him because at this kind of range, even if you are in a smoke screen, the Akazuki, which has terrifying firepower, by the way, for a tier 8 destroyer, well, he doesn't have to be particularly accurate to be able to uh, blind fire you in the smoke because he's so close. He just watches for your shell tracer and aims at where you last fired, and he's probably going to hit. The Akazuki, however, wasn't interested in remaining spotted. He's bugged out into cover behind the island over there. Unfortunately, the team have just lost a battleship. So things are starting to go badly. Although, on the bright side, they do now have two of the cap circles. And they're about to finish taking control of the third. There we go. Good job. Oedel. So, you win some, you lose some. You've lost a battleship, but you do have all three of the caps. And that points lead is really going to start racking up. There goes the Akazuki. Gets a couple of shots at him, but that's it. Doesn't want to hang around, although he has managed to go undetected. A couple of partner shots there from the Umagi as he kites away. He's not interested in getting any closer to a whole bunch of islands that may be concealing a sneaky destroyer. And Oedel, with his job here at Charlie Complete, is heading south to see how he can best back up and support the rest of his team. Unfortunately, they have just lost their Edinburgh, so there goes the team's radar. Now, the enemy team do not have a radar. There's only actually one cruiser on each side in this battle. But what the enemy team do have is a hybrid cruiser, the Toner. Toner took part in the battle of Midway, and arguably it was the Toner's scout aircraft that led to the Japanese loss. Although, you know, that is oversimplifying things dramatically. But the Toner here in World of Warships does have torpedo planes, as you can see. So no radar, but still has the ability to spot targets. And this is not where you want to be caught. Spotted from the air, that very angry smoke screen down there is an Akazuki. He is instantly switching fire. Unfortunately for the Toner, he managed to get his aircraft just a little bit too close to the Bismarck, and it looks like they all got shot down. That was good news for Oedel, because you don't want to be caught in open water with a stealthed, smoked-up Akazuki farming you for damage. He's gotten his torpedoes away, he's going to try and take the Akazuki out, but he's already, yep, yeah, anticipated that the torpedoes are going to be coming, and he's bugged out. Now this is not a fight that you want to get into. The Lightning's firepower isn't bad, but you don't want to get into a gunfight with an Akazuki. His initial salvo managed to knock out one of the Akazuki's turrets, but he's almost certainly damage-controlled it. It looks like he's got his engine boost running. I'm surprised he's still shooting now that the tables have been turned. Now remember, Oedel's smoke only lasts slightly more than 30 seconds, so he cannot stay here and continue shooting. The Akazuki's gotten away, and here come a Bismarck and an Odin. And the secondaries on those things are no joke. And, well, if you see a German battleship, tier 7 or higher, you kind of have to assume that they've gone secondary build. At least until proven otherwise. And with the smoke screen expired, he's exposed, there's the Odin, there's the Bismarck, the Akazuki's popped back up again. He is definitely taking the wisest course of action here and noping the hell out of there. Managed to get some shots off, took minimal damage in return, while getting showered with secondaries from the big Germans. Speaking of the big Germans, the friendly Bismarck up to the north is now almost certainly doomed. Hopefully he's going to be able to take one of those guys with him, because in all the excitement, I missed it, but the team have lost yet another ship. They're now three against six, outnumbered two to one, and they don't even have the cap advantage anymore. So right now it really is definitely a case of just trying to do the best they possibly can to support that Bismarck while everybody else 
on the enemy team is focusing him down and attempt to just grab a kill. It's on the Akazuki. Oh no, smoke up, smoke up. Here come the Tone's aircraft. And yeah, they've lost the Bismarck, which means nobody is spotting all of those low health enemy ships. Hang on, there's the Ogna boy. It's now two against six. They're outnumbered three to one. Here come the Tony's torpedoes. Really need to kill that Ognavoy. Come on. And he's down. And he's managed to avoid the torpedoes. Unfortunately, remember, this is a British smoke. It does not last very long. He's going to want to hang around here as long as he possibly can. Without getting himself killed. Because he is flipping this central cap. It's probably not going to stay flipped, however. Because there's a lot of very angry enemy ships. Right on the outskirts of the cap circle. But for the moment, the team do have a cap advantage. If not a points advantage, and definitely not a kill advantage. The friendly Akazuki down to the south, his only surviving teammate, is trying to flip capture point Alpha, and he has done it. But there's no way they're going to hold on to Charlie. And it's extremely unlikely that they're going to hold on to Bravo either. He's dumped his torpedoes. Unfortunately, German battleship, German hydro, saw them coming a mile away, still manages to land one, possibly two. Two. I think it may just be worth shooting and giving your position away here because you absolutely, definitely need to start sinking enemy ships and that Bismarck must die. Smoke back up again. Very, very short cooldown on this smoke, by the way, but this is his last charge. Once it's gone, it's gone. He got the Bismarck. Right. Let us not hang around blind inside this smoke screen. The Akazuki isn't going to be doing any spotting for you. Ah, speaking of Akazukis, there's a very suspicious looking smoke screen over there. That will be the enemy Akazuki. It's imperative that he gets eyes on something. Because the enemy have just flipped Charlie, and they've just flipped Bravo. Which means that Oedel's team can very soon expect to kiss goodbye to the points advantage that they're currently enjoying over the enemy team, which right now outnumbers them two to one. He must spot something, so that the Akazuki down to the south can assist. Unfortunately, do you remember those lag spikes that Oedel was suffering from? They're about to get much, much worse. Yeah, that's not a lag spike, Oedel. That's something an order of magnitude worse. Yep, his router just died when it's him and one surviving teammate against four enemies. One desperate router reset later, by some miracle, he's not dead. Probably because when he lost control of his ship and the game crashed, he was heading straight for that island rather than around the corner into the torpedoes. Launched by that very suspicious looking smoke screen over there. They're still ahead on points. The friendly Akazuki is playing cat and mouse with an Amagi down to the south, which leaves an Akazuki, an Odin and a Tone. Still unaccounted for, although judging by the rapidly dispersed smoke screen over there, the Akazuki probably isn't going to be too far, and unfortunately it's the Tony's aircraft that are going to be the big problem. See, even if they don't hit you with torpedoes, they still spot you for everybody else, like our little friend of the Akazuki over there. Now, the Tone's aircraft as a hybrid cruiser slash carrier have attracted the some criticism for being ridiculously fragile, and they are. They're very easy to shoot down, unless you're in a lightning. Despite the fact that these 120mm guns are dual purpose, and also count as part of your anti-aircraft battery, they are terrible. And he's struggling to even deal with something as notoriously fragile as a Tone's torpedo bomber squadron. Now, RPF is telling them there's somebody on the other side of that island. Now that was the Tone's last drop, so he's not going to be air spotted for much longer. The problem here is that he's been forced to sail a predictable course in order to thread the needle between those torpedoes, which means the Akazuki and the Tone are able to land some remarkably accurate blind fire on him. And then he gets hydroed. <laughs> Just when he thought he was about to catch a break. He's respotted, he's being focused down again. Oh, and his engine's been knocked out. Fortunately, he does have the last stand skill. And if you can just get behind that island, he's about to go out of the line of fire, so there's no harm in getting some sneaky shots off against the Tone on the way. And he's undetected. 
Well, that was close. Five minutes left. They're still 150 points ahead, but that can change very quickly. Alpha's being flipped. They only hold Bravo. They're not likely to hold on to that for too much longer. And, of course, he has to re-spot the Tone for the Akazuki. His engine's back up. And there's the enemy Akazuki. He, he has to kill him. He's about to get detected anyway. He does outspot the Akazuki. And... He's got him. That was totally worth the risk. He's managed to keep the Odin on the far side of the island, so he's only really had to fight one ship at a time, and that, of course, is absolutely the way to do it. He's going to attempt to ripple fire those torpedoes and maybe get the Odin while his hydroacoustic surge is on cooldown. But right now, he's not looking at enemy ships. I mean, he's looking at where the Odin is and he's making sure that the Odin is not going to detect him again. But he's looking at the points, because they're at 922 points. The kill on the Akazuki certainly helped, and it's bought them some time. But, they don't have any cap circles. The enemy have Alpha and Charlie. And they're in the process of flipping Bravo. So there are no more points coming in unless they can kill things. And that is by no means guaranteed when you're on as little health as this. So the important thing to do now is to get some more points coming in. And that's why he's heading for cap circle, Charlie. That means that the Akazuki is on his own at the moment. But he needs to be careful because the Odin's Hydro is going to come off cooldown soon. Also, the Akazuki is caught between the Odin and the Amagi. So the Akazuki is heading east, away from the Amagi. But take a look at the minimap. He's having to divert to the south in order to stay out of Hydro range of the Odin there. And if he gets spotted now, the Amagi's going to have shots at him. Odell again using the island there to get some sneaky shots off against the Odin without giving his position away. The Odin's launched his spotter flame. He's managed to get some capture resets off, but you do have to count on the Odin being able to take that cap circle. The Akazuki's resetting them as well. I guess it's just a question of how badly the Odin wants that cap. He definitely needs it. His team's nearly 300 points behind, and there's two and a half minutes of the game left. Then again, Oedel definitely needs this cap circle. And unfortunately, that's kind of what I was afraid of. I mean, a good news, bad news situation. Oedel has just earned the high caliber award, and he has taken the cap. But while the Akazuki was resetting the Odin down there in Bravo, he was being lit up and the Amagi managed to get him. So that is really bad news. Not just because Oedel is now the last surviving ship on the team with only 1,237 health left, and he managed to get another sneaky cap reset off there, but the loss of the Akazuki has given the enemy team some badly needed points, and they're now only just over 100 points behind, with one cap in the hands of each team. Oedel, however, despite the juicy target that the Odin is presenting there, is not dumb enough to start shooting at him and give his position away. He's winning doesn't need to win any harder than this. Are any of those torpedoes going to hit? A kill here would be absolutely fantastic. Oh no, they've just... they didn't have the range. The Odin did not take the bait, and he has flipped that central cap. There's one minute and twenty seconds left. If he can sink the Odin, that would be great. But he's going to have to be really, really careful about it. Because he doesn't know where the Yamagi is, and the Yamagi is a fast battleship. And if the Amagi is headed east, even if Oedel could fire over the island here and make sure he isn't in line of sight of the Odin, he may be in line of sight of the Amagi. And he cannot afford to take any damage. So firing now, even if the Odin doesn't see him, might still get him lit up because the Amagi might. But the thing is, he doesn't need to. There's only 40 seconds left. And he has a 100 point lead. So, all he really needs to do now is turn around and get out of there. He's not a particularly fast destroyer, but he's fast enough. Oedel is one of that rare breed of World of Warships players who's happy to just win, instead of win even harder. He doesn't need to kill the Odin. I mean, it'd be nice if he did. Oh, and I think he might. <laughs> I think the Odin's... Hydro has run out of charges because he's been using it well this far and those extra points were all that was needed for Oedel to win this one despite losing his connection halfway through the game. 
and being outnumbered three to one. And he won it just as hard as he needed to and not one inch more. And did it with over 3,000 base experience as well, which is an impressive achievement by anybody's standards. So, Oadell, well done. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.